Uh, good afternoon to the scientific committee of CT Buzz. I am Dr. Samir Aluwalia, currently a postgraduate resident, third year in the Department of Radio Diagnosis at Safdarjung Hospital, New Delhi. I'll be presenting my oral paper on the topic Multipoint Dixon Technique for Evaluating Sacroiliitis in Axial Spondyloarthropathy under the guidance of my uh, guide, Dr. Rupi Jamwal, who is a consultant and associate professor at Safdarjung Hospital, New Delhi. I have nothing to disclose and there is no conflict of interest. My aim was to compare conventional MRI sequences with T2-weighted T2 -weighted multipoint Dixon for the imaging of sacroiliitis in patients of axial spondyloarthropathy. As we know that axial spondyloarthropathy is also a common DD for lower backache and it's an inflammatory type of backache. Uh, that nature helps us to differentiate it from the mechanical backache and the uh, sacroiliac joints, the sacroiliitis is the most common, is the hallmark of axial spondyloarthropathy and earlier only since radiography was available, we could, uh, we used to miss out on the patients with acute features and the diagnosis and the consequent treatment hence was delayed by almost 10 to 14 years. Uh, the assessment of spondyloarthritis international society then included uh, mri as the new imaging arm in the diagnosis for the diagnosis of spondyloarthropathy in 2009 since it, it could actually pick up acute features of the disease and that the disease could be handled and controlled at that stage itself and fat suppression is used more co most commonly in msk imaging in abdomen or pelvis imaging and Dixon technique is one of them, named after the physicist W. Thomas Dixon. And it allows the signal of fat to be suppressed in the post-processing. And we get four images. Basically, it works on the chemical shift imaging and provides us with fat and water distribution maps. The methodology was that sacroiliac joint was acquired in a single session on a three Tesla GE discovery MRI system used in our hospital. The quiet sequences in the routine protocol, uh, they were taken and the T1 and the STIR sequences were looked up for any imaging feature of sacroiliatus, be it acute or chronic. And once uh, in a patient we found, uh, we added the Dixon sequence protocol to it and hence we obtained four images uh, it was named as lava flex in our machine, water only in phase, a post phase and fat only. And then uh, we, uh, the image analysis was done as follows. The contrast to noise ratios of the fat lesions in D1 and fat only Dixon and the bone marrow edema in stir and water only Dixon in all patients was calculated using the formula mean of the lesion, the signal intensity of the lesion minus the signal intensity of the bone surrounding bone marrow, the normal bone marrow upon the standard deviation of air. For evaluating the fatty lesion and erosions, uh, you, uh, the comprehensive Berlin uh, score was used and one sacroiliac joint was divided as such into four quadrants with the, uh, with the vertical plane passing through the joint itself and the horizontal plane passing through the lower border of the first sacral neural foraminum. So accordingly, for every patient, we have eight quadrants that need to be assessed. And the scoring of the bo uh, bone marrow edema of, of the erosions and the fatty lesions was done as follows. Uh, the number of erosions on a zero to three scale, zero meant no lesions are there. One was less than 33%, two was 33 to 66%, and three was more than 66%. That is of the bony joint surface in the respective quadrant. So accordingly, eight quadrants were to be evaluated, the score ranging from zero to 24. The results were as follows. The CNR of both the fatty lesions and bone marrow edema was statistically significantly more than uh, the conventional sequences on the Dixon sequences. And the CBM of the fatty lesions and erosions was also more on the Dixon sequences. As we can see in these images, the left is the T1-weighted axial cut showing hyperintense fatty lesions, but Dixon sequence shows it at with a better uh, contrast to noise ratio. The bone marrow edema that can be seen, uh, we can see it on stir and 
uh, we can see on uh, water only Dixon technique and we can see that the water only Dixon technique shows a relatively larger surface area of the bone marrow edema and with better contrast to noise ratio. Same for the, uh, this is a coronal cut of the T1 weighted and the uh, fat only Dixon and we can see a better contrast to noise ratio in the fat only Dixon. And this is for the bone marrow edema again. So the previous literature, a study was done by Ellie Osgan in 2017 uh, that, determine, that determined the value of T2 weighted multipoint Dixon for the active and uh, chronic sacroiliitis on 73 patients. And they actually found the results to be statistically significant and more on the Dixon sequences. They concluded that the uh, T2-weighted multipoint Dixon can be used as a single MR sequence instead of a conventional T1-weighted, T2-weighted and a contrast enhanced fat saturated T1-weighted imaging that So it saves time, it saves contrast administration. And this is very important. And, the images are obtained in th the images are generally 3D, so we can reconstruct it into various uh, planes as well. Um, so my study was an observational uh, cross-sectional study on sample size of 42 patients with signs of inflammatory back pain. The age range was 18 to 45 years and lower backache and morning, early morning stiffness were the most common symptoms and they were subjected to a non-contrast MRI scan of the sacroiliac joints first and for the patients who showed signs of either active or chronic sacroiliitis uh, for pertaining to... Uh, axial spondyloarthropathy, only those were, uh, for only those patients, t 2 weighted multipoint Dixon was used. And after completion, using, we calculated the CNR and CBM scores, and uh, then we compared them, and the mean CNR of bone marrow edema and uh, the and the fatty regions on the Dixon sequences, I'm sorry, was more than that on the conventional sequences. Same goes for the CBM scores. These are my references. Thank you very much.